All right, boys, welcome back to the channel. Something a little bit different today. Now, the last video I did on fake shirt reviews got taken down because, oops, sorry, YouTube, I tagged uh, the website that I got it from in the link in the description, which breaks um, YouTube's terms and conditions. So there'll be no links down below. But people were keen to see the review of the England shirt. So obviously, if you were to wear the missus bought me uh, the England shirt for Father's Day with Jack Grealish on the back. Wore it constantly over the Euros, but did cost £80. £80 for the England shirt. Um, men's, obviously, with Grealish 7 on the back. Now, that was from Sports Direct, so I thought, right, I need to compare the two. So then I went across to my Chinese website, BF Fans, and I picked up a Harry Maguire England shirt. Um, same size, at a cost of £11.45. Now, there's a huge debate, especially if you go on to sort of like social media with the football trends, Sorry, the football shirt trends that have built up since, especially since lockdown. There is obviously some, some shocking fakes out there. There's also people trying to exploit, the, even exploit the market over here a little bit more. It's amazing how many sh fake shirts you find on eBay and uh, Depop and people not ad advertising them as fake. That's my main issue is when people are trying to rub them off because to the naked eye, you cannot tell. The, the biggest giveaway for me is the name and number on the fake shirt. That's the biggest giveaway on the shirts. But if you're a, a parent who's just buying it for the son or daughter or buying it for a, a husband or a wife or whatever, and you're not keen on football and you don't understand generally what football shirts look like and how they're supposed to look like, then you may get caught in a trap where you're paying a shirt that should have cost you £12 and you may be playing £30, £40, £50 on eBay and Depop. So that's my main issue. Now, there's always question marks about how the shirts are produced um, in what working conditions and stuff, but even Nike themselves, um, I think it was back in like 2017, they were they got into trouble for how they how they were treating their workers in places like Cambodia. Now there's a reason why shirts are pr produced in places like Cambodia and Thailand and all sorts is because labour is cheap. Now I've done a little bit of googling, and the closest I can find is that the real the real shirts, the Premier League shirts, cost five pounds to produce, and this season most of them with name and number on the back, are going for £80, and that's a men's shirt. Now, that's a huge profit margin, and obviously, £80 is a lot of money. I could afford maybe to buy one shirt a month at £80. Now, I do buy real shirts. For, exa for example, bought this one last week. This is the York City uh, third shirt. Cost me £40. Now, I always think it's important to support my local club, my team, which is York City. I would never... I, well, to be honest, I don't think there's ever going to be a market in China for selling fake York City shirts, but... Um, this, I think, directly supports the club a little bit more and is a little bit more needed from the fans supporting things like merchandise and stuff in the smaller club. So this cost me £40. Now, this is Puma. This is Puma. This one is a template, but the home and away ones were, were not template Puma shirts. They were designed for the club. They cost £40. £40 for the men's. Manchester City. Manchester City, also Puma. Their new home kit starts at £70 for the home. So £40 for a Puma York, £70 for a Puma Manchester City. Read into that what you will. And for me, once again, I just think it's a bit of a piss take from the Premier League clubs exploiting their fans a little bit too much, even if they showed a little bit of goodwill and just knocked the price down. I think it would make a massive difference in terms of the amount of people that head to these Chinese websites. Now, us as a family, we do a little bit of both. We're lucky that Ralph is five, so doesn't even really under, even though he loves football, doesn't really understand the, the idea of having a fake shirt. He doesn't know any better. So we do a mixture. When we bought his Chelsea shirt for the start of the season, he's a Chelsea fan, bought his Chelsea kit. That cost us £55. If you head over to a, a, a Chinese website, yes, it'll take three or four weeks, but it costs £15. Massive difference in cost, and in particular, if you're kind of struggling financially or you've got more than one child, the price of new kits soon adds up. Now, that's my thoughts on it. I do think the price of those shirts are really pushing people towards the fake market. So I think potentially, hopefully in the next few years, there'll be a time when the football clubs and the sportswear companies get together a little bit and decide to lower costs and make them more affordable. Now, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you buy fakes? If you never bought a fake, do you occasionally buy fakes? Muchly appreciate if you let me know down in the comments. But let's dive into the England shirts. Now, both shirts are the same size. This is the real one. Okay, greenish on the back. Okay, and this is the fake one. There you go. It actually came with the number six on it as well. Now, closing your eyes and just feeling them, you can't feel the difference between the two. From a distance,
from a distance, not even a distance, but even from, you know, a couple of yards away, you probably wouldn't notice the couple of subtle differences that I've found in the shirt itself. Now the difference number one is the badge cut is the badge colour. This is the fit. This is this is the real one. This is the real one. This is the fake one. As you can see, the fake one, the fake one on the right is just a little bit lighter. Still decent quality. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the quality, but just a little bit of a change. Second one, England sort of like have, I think it's like supposed to be the lions on the crest, which is in the, which is sort of like, you might not be able to see it on the camera. You might pick it up when it goes into focus. There you go. There's like sort of like a slight, can you see? I think it's like the England badge, which goes through the, the collar. On the real one, it's, on the fake one, it's there, but just on the real one, it's a lot more noticeable. Like once again, if you're more than a couple of yards away from the person that's wearing it, you wouldn't know. So that's change number that's change number two. The biggest one, however, is the printing. And I have had a little bit of issue with the printing in the shirt. I got Ralphie the Portugal shirt, and within one wash, um, the Ronaldo, I'll link, put a little picture up now, the Ronaldo lettering started to come off. I also got a Crystal Palace one because I'm doing a Crystal Palace series, and down in the comment, down in the corner where it has a little bit of a Nike sort of like um, design, that started rubbing off even after two washes. Now I have had shirts, I have had fake shirts, that lettering is not a problem. I always find as well, especially, especially with football shirts, I try and wash all my football shirts together and put them on a really low wash. But my advice probably would be no names and numbers on back of shirts. That would be, that would be my one advice because it's the biggest. And when you close your eyes, you can feel it. It does feel... Now, I have had some shirts in the past from places like DHK with numbers on the back that have been absolutely shocking. A couple of, One was wonky. Um and was really thin, the lettering was really thin. Now this on the Maguire, from a distance looks pretty much exactly the same. However, the quality is completely different. This has been washed numerous times as well. The Grealish one's probably been washed over 30, 30 times, mainly down to because the missus had a uh, blue pen in her work uniform, and then when I washed them all together, it le leaked all over my England shirt. So this has been washed and hammered recently as I've been trying to get the stain out. So. As you can see, it's in pretty good, perf well, pretty much perfect condition. There's no real markings on this. It's got a little bit ruffled here. There's a few sort of like wear marks there, but that's probably down to the fact that it's been washed 30 times in the space of, what, three months. Um, this one, on the other hand, hasn't been worn as yet, but the feel of it, there is a slight colour change. This one's darker. However, this feels really thin, really thin. So... I think in, in particular over time, over time that will come off. Now you've got to weigh up, there's the argument with real ones that you get the longevity, which is yes, but at the same time, depends on how, how often you're wearing shirts. Now I've got about 30 shirts in my collection and I wear 10 on a regular basis. So generally I only maybe wear it once a week, if that. Some of the shirts, some shirts if I'm wearing just for a video, I don't even wash, I just put a shirt on and put it back and hang it back up. So you've got to weigh up Obviously, the price thing's a big thing, but the longevity. Longevity over price, £11.45 to £80. And apart from those three things, I haven't really found any other difference in the shirt. So the quality is good. Now, obviously, there's no resale value. Like, I could have sold that. I could have easily probably sold that for £40 and covered it off as a real one. It did have a tag on, did have a night tag on, and pretty much the main thing is that you wouldn't know. Now, little tip for you. The way to spot a fake, generally, is inside the label, right here. So right there, there's a code. You type that code in to the in onto Google, just type it in and then see what pops up. Normally, a real one will bring you straight to the England shirt itself. However, this one will probably bring you to another shirt. So let's let's have a little find out and see where this shirt takes us. And there, and there we go. As you can see, it's actually come up. The main one seems to be France away, so. There's a little clue. If you're ever stuck and worry about the quality, if it's real, go to that code, which is the first. Let me just get it into focus. It's the one, if you can just see it, the one just above, not the lower long number, the one that just above. Type that into Google and you'll come up with an answer. So there you go. That's a, that's a way of knowing how your shirt is real or fake. But as I said, from an ang from a distance and without really looking. And also, if it wasn't for the name and number, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. There's no way in saying like, the England badge on the fake is worse than the real one. It's just a case of a different colour, a slightly lighter colour. Nothing to say that the, because the, the collar on here stands out more than the collar on here, 
that means that one is real and one is fake. So yeah, there's a little tip for you. Use that if you're ever unsure about if your shirt is real or not. So that is it. Let me know your thoughts down below. As I said, it's it's just a for me, it's just a price thing. I will continue to buy fake shirts. The, the amount of shirts that are out at the moment that are really good. You know, I'll always buy sort of like like to buy a York City shirt. Ralphie will always the missus doesn't like to wear fake shirts. So I'll always have to buy her a real one for a Christmas or birthday present. But I will continue to maybe buy one a month. I've just bought the Athletic Club Bilbao a goalkeeper shirt randomly. Something that I would never think that right. I've I've got sixty seventy pounds spare to buy a football shirt that I'm not really bothered about too much about the team. You know, there's the Ajax shirt that's really good, teams in Italy uh, and stuff like that. So yeah, I will continue to buy the shirts when I feel the need to. I will continue to buy the real shirts when I want to. And as I said, let me know your thoughts down below. And that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Smash a like on today's video, muchly appreciated. If you want to join the Discord, we do have a football shirts thread in the Discord. Um, so you can chat, sh share designs, share new kits that you've seen. We also like tend to post offers and stuff on there from places like Classic Kits. And if any clubs, especially at the end of the season, when football teams are getting rid of their stock, that's when a lot of us in the Discord go and buy some random football shirts. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you later. They tell us lies.